What's up, guys? This is Kyle from Wax Museum. I hope everybody is doing well. As you can see here, I've got like a million tabs pulled up, but that's because I want to give you some visuals today to go along with an episode of the podcast that I did earlier this week, episode 144, titled Go Home Panini, You're Drunk. Um, you can find that on any major podcast platform. But the idea behind that was I wanted to talk about some of the major photo goofs that Panini's made this year. I understand that errors happen. I understand that no company's perfect. I don't expect them to be perfect, but um, we're starting to see these things at an increasing rate. And it's a little concerning, and it seems like Panini's getting a little lazy. So I think they deserve to be called out on it. So um, let's go ahead and start off with the, the first one that caught my attention this year. Of course, I'm a Pacers fan, um, and I am excited for when Hoops comes out at the start of every year. So this was Miles Turner's Hoops uh, base card. As you can see, I mean, if you've ever looked at Miles Turner, you know that's not Miles Turner. Um, it is, in fact, Justin Holiday, and you can see, even see Holiday on the back of the jersey. Justin Holiday's number eight. Um, so that's kind of how we started the year off. And I don't know for a fact where they get their photos from. I notice a lot of them are the same photos that show up on Getty Images. So um, I pulled that one up on Getty because, you know, sometimes maybe they're mislabeled and we'll run into cases later where they're mislabeled. In this case, it definitely wasn't. Justin Holiday, number eight of the Pacers drives to the basket um, against the Lakers. So um, you can see here, they just, they just messed that one up. You know, there's no way around it. Um, pretty disappointing, though, when you're a fan of that team and you want to collect some of those cards. It, it's hard. You don't really want the error cards as much. They're not as fun. Um, so then continuing through the year, we went to 2020 Prism. So I've got this one here first. This is number 34 in the 2020 Prism set. And it's correct. It's Kevon Looney. So nothing wrong with this card. So that's nice. You know, we know he's number five. We know, obviously, that looks like him. It is him. It's a picture of him. But then when you go a little bit further in the set here, and this is a different tab, if you couldn't see me change there, but this is Eric Paschal um, in the same set, number 71. So it's about, you know, 25 or so cards later. Um, and that is definitely not Eric Paschal. That is Kevon Looney. And even they put it even put it on the back, too. Um, so, you know, there we had something in PRISM. Well, um, that wasn't the only goof we saw in PRISM this year. We also had a Tory Craig autograph. Um, so that autograph is his. It'd be hard to tell. But yes, that is his signature. Um, the picture, however, is Jeremy Grant. And it's very, you know, if you once again, if you know the players, it's very obvious that that's not Tory Craig and it is Jeremy Grant. Um, someone pointed out on my Twitter at one point, you know, if these guys were signing the cards and not stickers, then they could just say, hey, that's not me. In fact, we saw that this week. There was a video that Richard Jefferson posted and Panini accidentally sent him an RJ Barrett card. And he said, hey, you know, this isn't me. And he thought it was it was kind of funny to point out. So the athletes will most likely notice that if they're signing on card. Um, however, here that was, you know, that he didn't have the chance. And um, if you go in, I'm, I'm pretty sure this photo is from the same game, but I just wanted to show, you know, I know Tory Craig is not as common of a name, but apparently he's significant enough to have an autograph in the product. Jeremy Grant's actually a much better player, um, and they do not look alike here. Uh, I mean, completely different hair. Um, and I thought, well, maybe Tory Craig has had, you know, a similar hairstyle at one point. I didn't think he did. Uh, I pulled him up on Google Images here. I don't see anything in the last few years that closely resembles that. I've never seen him with that kind of hair, but um, could be wrong. But either way, um, they messed that one up. Okay, so let's go to another one. This one's a little more difficult. Um, if there's one of them that I would give Panini a pass on, maybe it would be this one here. Uh, but they, so first off, let me just start off. This is a TJ Leaf card in 2020 Select. Uh, TJ did not play for the Pacers in 2020, um, at least not um, not a significant role. And he's bounced to a couple other teams since then. So it should have been cards with another team. But anyway, they got a TJ Leaf. They're trying to get rid of some of that memorabilia and some of those stickers. Um, you know, I looked at this and I knew it was Doug McDermott. Now, I know a lot of people won't. They you know, there are some things that look similar, like the numbers, you know, TJ Leaf is 22, Doug McDermott's 20. Um, and then you go into, this game is from August 4th, 
from the bubble. Um, Getty has got it labeled wrong, right? So maybe they they just pulled the name from Getty. Um, it's you know they said, oh no, that's it says it's T.J. Leaf. But um, like I said, I looked at it. I knew it was Doug McDermott. Um, you know, if you look at do a close up here of the shoes, you can kind of see. Um, there's a, you know, a specific Nike shoe. And then you look at another Doug picture from that game. It's the same shoe. I don't expect Panini to go through and do all that. I'm not trying to be unrealistic here, but, um, you know, if, if you look through the other pictures from the game and you can do that, you can just see that, no, it, it was not TJ Leaf. And in fact, if you look at the box score, which I did, I've got it pulled up here. I know I'm going quick. TJ Leaf didn't even play that game. So um, you know, definitely not TJ Leaf. Okay. Um, in addition to some of those NBA ones that we had this year, and I will come back to another one at the end, but we also had the WNBA prism set. Um, I'm going to refer you to a Twitter thread from a poster named old dirty mooch. And he goes through what he calls the good, the bad, and the ugly of WNBA prism. A lot of them are just old photos from, you know, from when the players were on different teams. But there was one that was pretty funny here. Um, we've got uh, this card here. Says Christy Tolliver, but um, it's definitely not Christy Tolliver. And in fact, she's a um, even you know pretty accomplished. She's a three-time All-Star, two-time WNBA champion. She's an NBA assistant coach at this point. Um, so that's who they put on the card. And this is uh, Christy Tolliver. So. Um, no, they're definitely not the the same person. So that one was kind of funny. Um, and then we get to the main thing that I talked about on the episode. So out of nowhere, Panini decided that they were going to have um, autographs of a, a kind of an obscure player from the mid to late 70s named John Shoemate. Um, didn't have a you know very storied NBA career, although he overcame a lot of things. And I talk about that on the episode. So they, for whatever reason, decided to include John Shoemate in a year where it's a lot of the same people. There's a lot of sticker dumps. Um, so I went on, but but that the problem is, is that picture is not John Shoemate, by the way. That picture is a player named Mike Mitchell. So I thought, well, you know, maybe it's a mislabeled photo somewhere. And I went on Getty Images and I typed in John Shoemate Spurs. Or actually, I'm going to do that right now so you can see that. So we'll do John Shoemate. Spurs, because I also want to show you a little bit how to use Getty images. When you type it in, it's not going to show up. So you have to click on editorial. You click that. Okay, there's five pictures. Um, four of them are actually John Shoemate. One of them is not. And I know they went with the one that's the you know clearest quality, but they had an 80% chance to get this right and they didn't. Um, now, also Getty messed this up because when you do click on this, um, you can see it says John Shoemate takes a jumper against the Lakers in 1970. Well, no, that's the Pacers. It's clearly Clark Kellogg. Um, Clark Kellogg was drafted in 82. Shoemate stopped playing in 81. So kind of a strange, uh, strange little situation there. But anyway, they messed it up. So kind of strange. But um, this isn't the first time that we've seen this in sports. It, it probably won't be the last in sports cards. Um, probably the most notable one from the modern era is Miguel Cabrera's Bowman prospect card is not actually Miguel Cabrera, but, you know, I think he was like 17 when they made this card. So yes, they got the wrong, you know, young Marlins player. Um, I ask people on Twitter, Hey, can you point me out to other mistakes that card companies have made before Panini as far as basketball? Cause I can't remember um, even a handful in basketball. I know there are instances where, you know, the cards were misprinted. Maybe you had one player on the front and a different player on the back but it wasn't a photo error. That was just a manufacturing printing error. Um, the only one that someone was able to come up with, which I still don't think is quite the same type of error that I'm talking about, but that was the 48 Bowman uh, reprint. Well, you know, redo set or whatever you want to call it of Gerald Wallace. Uh, well, it's a Spencer Halls, but all of the Spencer Halls cards had Gerald Wallace on the front. So that was really the only one. Now, um, as far as the Panini era goes, I know there was another one here that was Alvin Adams. This, in fact, is not Alvin Adams. You can go on Getty and, and you'll see that's Mike Bratz. Um, and they even have it labeled correctly. So um, let's go back to that Shoemate era, though. 
I want to finish with that. So you're, you'll remember that they included John Shoemate in recon. Um, but they also did, so they're using the, the stickers with the wrong picture in multiple sets. They included it in illusions. But what I also want to point out here is look at this design. You've got a player shooting, and then you've got the picture blown up a little bit in the background in the auto below. That's from Recon. We go to Illusions, which is another similar kind of junk set. You have the picture of him shooting. You have the picture blown up in the background, and you have the auto. This is why I'm ready to move on from Panini. Um, there's just a litany of errors here, or just goops or, or laziness. Um, you have the same picture used, the wrong player, the same basic boring design. There's not a lot of effort that's going into this stuff. Um, they were acting like a lame duck company before they were that. Now they are a lame duck company. So that kind of scares me for what we're going to see in the next couple of years. Um, but as I've said, and I've stated many times before, I am in fact ready to move on. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Maybe you're not ready to move on. Maybe you're still very happy with what Panini's doing. Um, maybe you're not excited about Fanatics. Who knows? Let me know. As always, new episodes of the podcast will come out every Thursday. Thanks for watching.